Hi there guys, it's Rick here. Hope you're all doing extremely well out there. I know I am. Today we're going to be taking a look at this major scale, just a simple major scale, and we're going to take a look at a way of making it sound more musical. Now what exactly do I mean by that? Usually when we play scales and practice scales, it's usually for technical purposes. In other words, we want to improve our picking technique, we want to improve our legato technique, hybrid picking technique, whatever technique it is, we usually play scales in order to solve those technical issues. And I think it's very, very important that as well as practicing the scales to improve our technique, I think it's very important that we approach scales in a musical fashion rather than just a technical one. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. In order to do this, what we're gonna to have to do is, with this particular example, is to reorganize the way that we play the major scale. So, more often than not, most players come from two sides, either it's three note per string or, or the caged thing, in other words, a scale that fits around a chord, which means that we play a mixture of two notes and three notes per string. So, three notes per string. <laughs> that or cage fits around the chord shape. What we're going to do is we're actually going to take three notes on every string but we're going to organize them in a specific way and the main reason for that is so that it enables us to develop a motif because that's what we're going to be doing develop a motif and play it sequentially through the scale without skipping notes out uh, because especially if we're doing three notes per string if we, if we create a motif we go to play it through the, um, the scale pattern, which is great, that works really, really well, but we're missing some notes out. We're going, sorry, straight from here, straight here. So we've missed out a portion of the scale. So in order to, to solve that problem, we're gonna rearrange it. So I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna do firstly. So we're gonna keep it in A major, keep it really, really simple and we're going to take two shapes on the low E. Oh, turn it up a bit. So that's the first two shapes, okay. Then on the next, so we start on root, second degree, then we're going to move down to the third degree here and play. So three, four, five, and what I'm saying numerically there relates to the interval against the root, okay. Starting on the third, Fifth. Okay, then we move down to the sixth degree and do, do three shapes. Okay, second degree. And then we finish here at the top. Okay, so that's nice and slowly. that's the pattern that you really need to memorize with this and what we're going to do is we're going to apply some simple melodic IT ideas to that scale to make our scale practice sound more musical developing motifs that's really what we're looking at here so um, let's take our first position because we're going to apply that motif to each one of those positions on each string um, and we're going to take a simple pattern and we're going to start with slides because when we do when we um, create motifs, it's a good idea to utilize some of the unique effects that the guitar um, allows us to achieve. You know, that sort of portamento slide sound. You know, uh, other instruments just aren't able to do that. Um, so it's a good idea to, to incorporate these kind of things to make our playing sound more musical. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna play this little motif, okay, to every scale position. Okay, um, we've got something that sounds musical straight off the bat, taking a motif and applying it to the scale sequentially, on, in other words, on each step of the scale, works really, really well for coming out with 
uh, phrases, which will in turn help your improvisation no end. So, let's change that up a bit. What we're going to do is add a little bend here with the index finger. Oops. I won't do the full thing, but that sounds really cool. Excellent, you can continue and so on all the way uh, to the top of the scale. So that's one example. Um, let's try something else. What we're going to do is uh, this pattern, which is a little hammer on and a pull off, okay? Great little idea that, and especially if you start adding in um, stuff like vibrato and sliding and string bends, it really helps to create uh, a much more musical sound. Uh, so what do we have? On, off, off. I'm just improvising here. See, you can, you can, once you get creative, you can come out with all sorts of ideas that will help your scale playing and put you in a much more musical realm than just a, a technical thing. And I feel that with guitar players, it's, it can become very frustrating when we sit and we play scales for just technical ends, just to improve our alternate picking or economy picking or whatever. Um, it can get pretty frustrating and pretty boring because what happens is, the more that you do that, the more that will spill over into your improvising. And this is why a lot of guitar players get very, very frustrated with not being able to improvise very well, because what happens is they end up just playing these, these exercises that they've worked on uh, with their picking technique. And, um, you know, you hear it all the time, and I understand that. Uh, it's very frustrating. So there, there's a time and a place for practicing your technique. You know, do it, but also apply the same kind of focus and dedication that you do to your technique to these kind of musical exercises. You know, they will really, really help um, your musical development and your improvisation skills, you know. So we don't have to just stick with a major scale. Let's take a melodic minor, for instance. So if we take our pattern, so we start with root, second degree. So there's two groups on the bottom E string, then it's followed by three. So you can apply all these. Now, I would much rather hear something like that than just a scale up and down just for technique's sake. I'm talking about in an improvisation, you know. So try and come up with your own ideas, your own little motifs, and apply it to this little shape that we play. Uh, I'm doing the melodic minor now. Apply it to, um, to those scales and see what you can come up with. Anyway, I hope this has given you some food for thought in terms of creating, making your scales sound more musical. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you check out my website. Uh, it's 20% off currently, so link is in the description box below, so great way to support what I do. Hope you've enjoyed today's lesson and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.